On another note, it's just been revealed that the Swiss government has been quietly funding legal activity within the pro-Palestinian boycott movement for at least the past year. Activities that include building cases against Israel for the International Criminal Court at The Hague. And in fact, Switzerland has paid out around $2 million to several such organizations in Ramallah through its foreign ministry uh, mission in the PA. And this despite publicly ending support for other organizations that supported BDS just prior. Well, here with the breakdown is Israeli author and journalist with Yediot Tachonot, Ben Dror Yamini. Uh, thank you so much for coming in, first of all. Thank you. And all right, so let's just start. What are the details of this case? What, what can you tell us? Okay. You know, break this down. Let me correct you, please. If I'm allowed. Uh, first of all, it's many years now that they are funding NGOs that support the BDS, that support uh, all this kind of. Uh, so this is ongoing for. Yeah, yeah. Now, the point is that two, two years ago. Um, the parliament in Swiss, the two parliaments, the upper house and the lower house, they decided actually to cut this kind of funding, not anymore, because of many reasons. One of the reasons is, and we have to mention it, it's because two delegates from the NGO monitor, it's an Israeli NGO that is uh, monitoring uh, all this kind of uh, NGOs that are uh, active against Israel. And it was decided upon, surprise, surprise, in the parliament, that no more funding for those kind of uh, uh, anti-Israeli uh, NGOs. But, but um, it's just like in many other cases, just like the EU parliament from one side and the commission from the other side. The EU decided, for example, to adopt the working definition uh, of anti-Semitism, which actually uh, um, you cannot fund any of these kind of NGOs, but the Commission keeps on funding them. It's the same in Swiss, so in Switzerland. So, the, the, I mean, decision of the Parliament is one thing, and the, what the foreign ministry is doing is something else, which is now what we have to do, I mean, speaking about Israel, to go again to the Parliament and to tell them, by the way, not the Israeli government, the Israeli government is not allowed to go to the Parliament. Mm. It's. NGOs, just like NGO monitor, to go to the parliament and tell them, look, they keep on. You decided one thing, and they just do the opposite. So, so again, do you think that this kind of quiet funding was done on purpose? Was it, was it completely, to undermine something? Completely, some? completely, completely, maliciously. It was even. done maliciously done to undermine the government's... Completely. Do you think the government had any hand in it? They said, I, oh, well, you know... They'll do it, and we know about it, but we want to save face, the, so we'll say don't do it. The foreign minister of Switzerland, he was in the parliament two years ago, Didier Burkhalter. Um, I hope I'm pronouncing the name uh, rightly. But he was in the parliament. It, he, he, he just tried to convince them not to adopt the resolution against the funding. He failed. He failed. But his ministry is doing the same, just like if there is not any kind of decision. That's what's interesting. I mean, it's happening. So, it, this is a kind so of. So how can this cognitive dissonance exist? Because be, when when a government says one thing and then its employees, its government, you know, service members do exactly the opposite. It's how the can same, that happen? I mean, in, in uh, a you know, like if I was an extreme right winger, I would tell you something like, "This is the deep state." I mean, this is how sure. it's working. I'm not. So it's a kind of, you know. Just like in many other cases, one policy, there is a policy, for example, of the White House, but there is another policy of the State Department. It's the same, by the way, in France with the Quai de Dorsay, which is the foreign ministry of uh, France and uh, the president. It's always there is a kind of tension. But many times, it's not only a kind of, yes, we disagree about something. They do what they want, they have their own policy, the foreign ministry, they are funding against the will and against the decision of the parliament. And, and uh, this is part of the problem. Uh, by the way, we have to say something about the point itself. What they do is counterproductive to peace because sure. they are funding Israeli NGOs and, and Palestinian NGOs that are totally against peace, that are totally against the two-state solution. I mean. It doesn't matter if you agree or not to this kind of solution, but the EU is supporting the uh, two-state solution. Switzerland is supporting the two-state solution. Mm -hmm. And what they are funding is the infrastructure that will be against any kind of solution 
of uh, because they are supporting the BDS, for example. Okay, so my final question, then, because you mentioned that Israel cannot really go to the parliament yeah. and say, "Hey, stop this! It has to be an NGO." An, yeah. an NGO. I'm sorry. So, what can Israel do, if anything? Uh, first of all, to protest and to tell them and to explain. Look, look, it's fair enough to be against the Israeli policy. I mean, that's but when you are funding NGOs uh, in Israel, it's against against any kind of international uh, um, acceptance. It's against what, is, uh, what should be between states. Just imagine that Israel will fund any kind of NGO that is working against the government in France, in Germany, in Switzerland, wherever. It's inconceivable. Mm. So how come that they do it? Don't do to us what you don't do in Europe, what you don't want us, the Israeli government, to do uh, to your state, to your government. I mean, that's, I mean, there are some basics in the relationship between states that they are violating. That's what they do, unfortunately. All right, journalist and author Ben Yamini, thank you very much for coming in again. Thank you for having me.